So I've got the enveloper open here. And basically what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to manipulate the attack of this snare and I'm going to add some snap. OK, and you can do this with other instruments as well. So if you've got strings or plucky instruments, you can just emphasize those initial transients. And basically what I suggest doing is leaving the threshold at minus 100. That's the point. The threshold, any signal that exceeds the threshold is going to have its attack and release times manipulated. I leave the look ahead at zero milliseconds. And then we have the attack time. And that is the time it takes for the signal to reach the maximum gain level from the threshold. So a good place to start is about 20 milliseconds. I think the default is 15, but I generally start it at 20, but you can time it to the track. And then we've got gain, okay? So we can apply gain to that initial transient. So when I say initial transient, I'm referring to the attack phase, the attack portion of the signal. So I'm gonna play this snare on repeat, and then I'm going to gradually bring in the enveloper. I say bring in, it is already in there. I'm going to increase the gain on this enveloper and thus increase that attack part of the signal. So I'm going to get it up to uh, anywhere between sort of like 60 to 80% and you'll start to hear the difference. I actually finished on 90%, but it's actually quite exaggerated and it'd be more than I'd want to use, but I wanted to make it pronounced so you could hear it. And then what we could do is we could use the time element of the attack phase and just expand that. And you can, you're sort of like opening it up and you're bringing more of the tail into the attack phase and in particular, this gain that's been applied. So I'm going to increase the time and you'll start to hear more of the sort of tail of the snare come in. So you can hear that, that thwack straight away. So you'd want to bring that down. I mean, that's at 90 milliseconds. So I'm just going to, I'll drag it back so you can hear the difference again. I mean, for me, I quite liked it the other way. So let's A, B it. And I'm going to leave the envelope on and then I'll bypass it. So this is with it on. And this is with it off. Now, again, it's at 90%. I'd probably drag that down, but I'm overemphasizing so you can hear it here. But what I would recommend you do and pay attention to is you can see the signal is blasting above the zero here in my track. 32-bit floating point, so it's not clipping. But you want to use this output level and reduce that down because you kind of want it to be where it was before. So with this bypassed, minus 14.6 with the envelope on at 90%. Let's drag it down a bit. I'm going to drag it down to 60. And then with it off. And then you can just drag the output level down as well. So we're compensating for that increase in signal at the output level here by reducing it. And you can go the other way, folks. So if you want to mute the initial attack of a signal, you can drag the gain slider into minus percentages. So let's give that a go. So I'm going to start at 60 and then I'm going to drag it down. And there you go. That's at minus 100%. You can hear it's totally muted that attack. So the envelope, that is the attack phase or the attack portion of the envelope there. There's a release as well, and I'll do a video on that later. But that is the attack part. So we can add snap and attack and punch to those quick transient signals. So there we go, the unsung hero of the dynamic section in Logic Pro, the enveloper. Give it a go, folks. Add that thwack, that snap and attack to those transients.